Hello and welcome to Speak Up for Sustainability, a brand new project with Pearson and BBC Studios. We're here with our first interview, a very special guest. It's Praveen Gopalan, and he works for BBC Studios. Thanks for joining us, Praveen. Thanks for having me, Harry. Can you tell us something about what you do at BBC Studios? And I'm the sustainability guy for the company. So I help work with these different teams to make sure that our products and our services are as environmentally friendly as possible. So that's what I do. Ah, fantastic. And how long have you been there? How long have you worked for BBC Studios? So I've been here for a while now. It's uh, just over six years I've been at the BBC. Oh, excellent. Um, and what was it that first inspired you to get into climate change and sustainability? Yeah, so I really wasn't um, driven into climate change specifically. What I really wanted to do was to work in nature and the environment and protect the environment. And that's because I'm a child of the tropics. I grew up in Malaysia and I grew up away from the cities. I was in the country. So I was surrounded by nature all the time. I really enjoyed nature and wanted to do my bit to protect it. So I studied environmental related degrees. And uh, of course now climate change is one of the biggest issues that we have for nature. And that's how I've fallen into looking after working in climate change. Excellent. Now, one big question. We hear this phrase a lot, but what is our carbon footprint? Right. So a footprint. So if you were walking on the beach on a wet sand, or if you've got wet feet and you step on a dry ground, you then have, when you remove your foot, there's an imprint of your foot, the print of your foot, that image. And what that shows is the result of your action of walking. So if you took five steps, you'll have five footprints, right? Similarly, a carbon footprint is the imprint or the result of your action measured in carbon. So it shows how much carbon has resulted from what you've done. And you could measure that for a day or you could measure that for a year or a month. Um, and there are lots of different calculators online that you can use. And when you go in there and you say, I've had a beef burger, they've had done lots of calculations to show a beef burger means this much carbon was emitted. Or if you say, I left a light on for 10 hours, there are lots of calculations that says 10 hours of light means this much of carbon. And so if you add all of that together, all the things you've done and all the carbon that comes out of that, you get your carbon footprint. I, I never really know about this one. So I'd like an expert's opinion. Um, what do you think is the biggest cause of carbon emissions? Yeah, so I think the biggest cause in its most simple way is the fact that we are buying and using and doing a lot of things. And the reason that has a carbon footprint or an impact is because we use energy. And when I say energy, I mean two things. One, electricity, and two, the fuel that you use for transport. So for example, petrol and diesel and jet fuel for planes, cars and trains and all of that. And electricity that comes from burning coal and natural gas. Coal, gas, petrol, diesel, and all of those are known as fossil fuels. And essentially, these are dead plants and animals that have been buried for thousands and millions of years underground. And when we burn them to create electricity or to power our cars, it emits carbon dioxide. Um, now, I think the big question on, on everybody's lips is, what can we do to reduce our carbon footprint? Yes. So the easiest thing to do, which has also got financial and money benefits, is to not buy as many things. For example, again, it's very easy to go into the supermarkets and see there's a shirt that is 50% off. And so I will buy it. But do I really need that extra shirt, right? Because if I think about it, looking at it is just one single shirt. But if you think about the entire journey of the shirt, because you'd have had someone grow the cotton, you'd have had someone use a lot of machines that are powered by fuel, to harvest the cotton, take it to a factory where the uh, machines would have been used to make the shirt, and then it's transported to the shops, and then it's transported to the shops to my house, and then I use it five times, and then I get bored, and I throw it away, and then it's got to be transported to the waste plant, and then it's got energy to uh, burn the thing or to uh, dispose of it responsibly. So there's a lot of carbon. So the less we buy that we don't need, the less carbon we emit, and it's better for the planet. The second point is once you buy stuff is to not waste it because often now we find we buy something, if it breaks, we quickly chuck it away. 
And this is where reduce, reuse, and recycle comes in, right? So you try and reduce as much as you can, so you don't buy stuff. Re you reuse it, so if you can fix it, you fix it, and only then recycle. And I believe you are going to be exploring this in detail later, Harry. Reduce, reuse, and recycle. We are and indeed. Find... Great. And the final point that I'd like to make is about what we eat. And uh, really being a vegetarian has a much better impact on the climate. We don't all have to be vegetarian. What it would be good is if we reduce the amount of meat we eat because meat does have a strong climate impact. And so almost treat meat like a treat really because before when meat was really expensive, we didn't eat it every day. We didn't eat it with every meal. It was a special thing. And so if we can start thinking of meat in the same way, that would be very good for the environment. Brilliant. Well. Thank you very much for your time today. It's been a real pleasure. Um, I look forward to speaking to you again soon. Um, so thank you very much. Thank you very much, Harry. It's been a pleasure speaking to you as well. I'll speak to you soon. Bye-bye. Speak to you soon. Bye.